everybody, this is Lisa Lawrenson with Rose Molly by Art of Lisa. Welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. So today I'm going to revisit the video that I did prior to this uh, with sanding and prepping your piece. There were some steps I kind of left out. So sit back and I hope you enjoy. And if you have questions, please feel free to send me that. Okay, let's revisit this. Back to the table again. So as I mentioned last week, I have a space in my basement where I can actually work. And uh, that's not in my studio, so I kind of overtake with my kids. All right, so I'm gonna come back over something. If any of you woodworkers out there or your decorative painters know, when you pick up a piece at Michael's or AC Moore, which is no longer going to be around, or perhaps Hobby Lobby or Joann's or anything like that, you have these horrible little stickers on the back. They're a pain in the neck to get off. So I wanted to take a moment to show you how I do this. And it's very easy, a hair dryer. All right, so this, the uh, glue that they use on these stickers are quite tough to get off. So I have found that this is the best way to do it. So excuse the hair dryer, but here we go. Well, let me explain. I'm going to blow dry this and lift up from the corner and I push the hot air underneath it and it will lift it right up. Ready? All right. I'm going to let it warm up for a few minutes. I have it on high because the low did not work well with this hair dryer. All right, let's see. Can I get my finger under there? Huh? Ready? Watch that. Look at that. Nice and easy super easy way to get stickers off the back. Then what I do is I take rubbing alcohol, just normal rubbing alcohol, and I always have pieces of paper towel cut up. Now these are the Viva paper towel without the lint on it. I prefer that, or I prefer the uh, automotive towels that you can get at uh, any automotive shop or Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. All right, so then I simply rub the rubbing alcohol on the back of this because that will break through the residue of the glue. Now, I don't use water because water will raise the wood and we don't want that to happen. All right, so this is all set to go. Now, to try to get it off without doing that, here, ready? Let me use my nail. I push, I push, and oh yeah. Yeah, see, that? what a pain in the neck this is. Ready? I can't get that off. So again, hair dryer, heat it up, send paper towels flying, get your finger under there. And just start lifting it up. Much easier to do. All right, so now we have that piece taken care of. Let's put these aside. Now, if you remember last week, I had base coated these and I had done the sanding on them. Again, this is the coat, the one that I had two coats on. This is one that I have one coat on and it's a little rough on the edges here. So once you put the paint on there, it does raise up the edges a little bit. So this is where I'm going to revisit the sanding. Now, last week, let me put my gloves back on. I like to kind of protect my hands from the sand and all that stuff, or the sawdust, I should say. All right, let's get my hands in here. All right, now I have a finer grit. I usually start with 220. I get them again at the local hardware store and then I cut them up into pieces. And I can use the 220 on this because I, this is a little rougher than I'd like it to be. Now, this was a piece done by a wonderful woodworker, um, so I don't have to do much sanding on this, but the paint did raise up the grain a little bit, so I just wanna break it down a little bit here. All right, there we go. See, nice and easy on that. Yeah, come around this side. And that's the ends of the wood plank, so they're going to be a little rougher than they will on the sides here. A little smoother there. Now then I'll take a finer uh, sandpaper. I think this is a 400. And again, I'll come back over the edges 
and smooth it out because I really want that as smooth as I can get it. Let's take that back in here, nice around the edges. Okay, now another way I do it to give it smoothness is I add water to my sandpaper because this is a little rougher than I'd like. So then I'm just going to come back and give it a little sanding. All right. Now that's nice and smooth. Take a brush or a lint-free um, paper towel or something, and I just am going to sweep off that dust there. All right, so I want to get that off. All right, so now, let's move a few things out of the way. I've got the back of my piece to do. Now I can do this a few different ways. I can do it the same color, and since I have the color prepped, I'll probably do that. So here I have nothing on the back yet. The back is ready to go. But before we get to this, I'm going to show you something that I use. So my father, many years ago, made for me these wooden pieces here. Really simple. I think this one's about, oh, a little over nine inches uh, by about five and a half inches, and it's an inch thick. And then this one, the smaller one, is five and a half inches by, oh, three and a half inches. And again, just shy of an inch thick. And then what my father did was he took nails and hammered them through. So if you can see there, I'll do it this way. You can see I have four nails on this one, and I have three nails on this one. This is what I use when I paint both the front and the back at the same time. So I'm going to use the smaller one because it's not that big a piece. When I do a bigger plate, which I'm going to do shortly, um, and I'll show that to you guys, I'll use this bigger one. So let's put this aside. All right, so here's my piece that I just showed you, and it needs another coat of paint. So this has only had one coat of paint here, none on the back. So we're gonna catch up a little bit on the back here. So. I have my paint ready. Now, I am a big person, a uh, big proponent of reusing and recycling. So this is apple, actually an applesauce container. I use these all the time to mix my paints and I can reuse them. All right, so this has blue haze, Delta Ceramco blue haze, and clear, Joe Sonia clear glaze medium. Adding the medium to it is part of the sealer. It helps keep the wood from raising on you. It uh, just finishes it off more completely, and we can also use this as a barrier coat as we go. All right, so I have a brush ready here. There's my brush. I am going to dip it into my paint. Let me move that in so you can see. So my paint's all ready, and I'm gonna follow the grain of the wood, and I'm just holding it in my hand here. All right, come around. And again, this piece was done by Mike Lusk of Lusk Scandia Woodworks. Uh, in Wisconsin. I get a lot of my wooden wear from him. Wonderful woodworker. All right. Let's get around the edges here. And you can, even though I follow, you can kind of push it in, especially this first coat. I want to get the paint really into the grain. All right. So now I'm not going to worry too much. I have my finger here. I'm going to come around the edges. Okay. Because I'll brush it over that back again. Come back, let's get in that where we had sanded nice and smooth. Bring it all the way around here. All right, bring it around again. Okay, have a little bit more to go. And you don't need a lot of paint. You'll find it goes a long way. I'm gonna come back here again. Just kind of take my fingerprints out. All right, so here's where this comes in handy. I take this and I simply put it on the back there. I flip it over and then I can put it right down on the table here. And then I can continue my painting. And this way, I can get both the front and the back done. I'll flip it around this way. Keep my finger in the middle there to hold it steady. I can get both the front and the back done in one sitting. It makes life much easier. 
And this way, usually when I prep one piece, I prep a lot of pieces at the same time. All right, so this is ready. This can sit and dry. So as I mentioned, I do prep other pieces at the same time. Sometimes what I also do is I have pieces of cardboard ready because I use cardboard a lot to practice on. So this is the back of a au gratin box. And I'll take that same paint and prep a, this board, and this will take a couple coats. And if you do this at the same time as when you're working on a piece, you can test your colors. Uh, you can test how the colors work together. And then you can also use it, write down what colors you used on here as reference for your piece. All right, so another recycle, reuse. I feel like Bob the Builder, any of you out there that know that one. All right, so one last thing today. So this piece now, I'm gonna move this out of the way. All right, and just to review, because I'm not using my brush at the moment, what I do is I take that same type of paper towel and I wet it. I literally can put it right in my basin of water. All right, get that nice and wet. And I have a piece of plastic wrap ready. Put my plastic wrap here. I take my brush. I put it inside of here. It keeps this all wet and ready to go for next time. Because I'm working in acrylics, and acrylics dry much faster than oils. So I want to have that all ready to go. And I don't want my brush to dry out. You want to keep your brushes working for as long as possible. All right, so here, this is really almost ready to go. It's had the third coat, or a second coat, I should say. And I want to see if, I'm going to give it a light sanding here just to kind of smooth it out. All right. The edges are nice on this because this I had done twice. Okay, this is ready to go. I always have paper towel ready. I'm just going to wipe it down here. Okay. And as I mentioned before, I use the glaze medium as a barrier coat. So in preparation for this to paint and for putting on uh, whatever pattern I might do, I'm going to take my clear glaze medium, and again, I have an applesauce cup. Give it a good little shake here. It comes out this white shade, but it goes on clear. Okay, and I have this all ready, and I'm literally just going to coat this on, and I'm going to let this dry. Let me come around the edges. So this barrier coat will help with the acrylic. So let's say you're painting and you want to remove something. It's easier to remove it. You won't remove the paint underneath. I also will put this on before I varnish a piece. And again, these are from Joe Sonia. Uh, this is from Chroma. Uh, they're a company out of Lidditz, Pennsylvania. All right, so this piece is ready to go. And again, I can use my board. This is a little bigger than it need be, but I can put it on here and easily shift it in this direction, and then it will be ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of revisit of uh, the sanding and prepping of pieces, and I'm sure I'm going to be doing more of these in the future. Again, if you're new to the channel and you had fun watching, please take a moment and subscribe. And for those of you who have been watching, and, and obviously for those that are new, if you have questions, please feel free to write them in the comments and I will get back to you. Might be a day or so. Sometimes I get a little caught up, up in my uh, kid life, but by all means, please give me a, a, a little note. Have a great day, and remember, it's just paint. Take care, and God bless.